Hello guys! Hey! <laughs> hey from Hue! <laughs> My god, so stupid! Yes, <laughs> In Vietnam. Still gonna keep that though. Uh, <laughs> we just arrived. We took a night train from Ning Bing. We've never done that before. No, we were always uh, doubting if we should and somehow we always end up with a bus. Mm -hmm. But this time we, we took a chance and it was actually uh, better than we expected. Yeah. So we arrived at the bus station, at, at the train station at 9.30. 10 o'clock was our train. Yeah. And we yeah. shared one of those cabins, Indeed. which is usually per four people. Mm -hmm. So with another couple from the UK. But yeah, it was just uh, going to sleep right away because it was yeah. so late already. I wanted to say, I mean, you don't really do much there anyways. No. When it's a sleeper train, uh, we went to sleep so early and basically we had no idea if we were sleeping or not because we were woke up in the middle like yeah, a few every, times. Yeah, but you just wake up and you fall asleep again. But I wasn't sure if I was actually asleep or not, which yeah. was weird. But Me too. I had to get used to the movement from the train oh, yeah, a little right. bit, to be honest. It's, it's way different than a bus. Yeah. Because like it's a constant same movement. Mm -hmm. In the end, it was like six o'clock when I was looking at, at, uh, at uh, the phone. I was like, oh yeah, I did sleep. So. <laughs> Another small thing about the train, um, we can really recommend it actually, and you should book it up front. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, don't know, I don't know how long we did it up front, at least two weeks up front, maybe even three. Yeah, we read do it at least two weeks up front, but I, we did it three. three weeks up front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we barely found any sleeper, uh, sleeper cabins left. It was only the number four. The last, one. yeah, fun which fact is funny. Yeah, about that. It is because we think of the superstition of people around here because we know that from China that the number four is an unlucky number, mm -hmm. as the word "s" is um, sounds phonetically close to death. So the number four phonetically sounds close to death in Chinese, and it could also be the case here in Vietnam because it is mm -hmm. also in some other yeah. other uh, Southeast Asian countries. So it could be that was the reason why that it wasn't it was pulling up. That it was the only one free. Yes. And yeah, we did it that much up front. We met a couple along the way who booked it just a few days ago and they had to sit. Like, and it was the last thing they also could get. So just be aware that you book up front. Yeah. And yeah, 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 by the time we woke up, we were basically almost in Hue. So here we are. And it's way hotter than north of Vietnam. We have yeah. to get used to it a bit. And so, like we just announced, we already went to the barber for Moritz. So look at this fresh guy. Moritz went to the barber earlier here in Hue, Vietnam. And how did you find the place? Uh, I was actually looking for it through Google Maps and trying to find one which had good reviews, but also good Western reviews, just to be sure. So the place was called Hem Barber Shop. Uh, and indeed found through Google Maps and it was a really nice place. They speak English there so you can tell them what you want. I showed them uh, a few pictures in the video just so that I get the haircut kind of what I want. And of course they go a little bit shorter here. Yeah, uh, can you make a swirl? Can you show? Yes, but I, I did like it. Yeah, I'm also really happy. I really like the haircut and it's such good value for money though. My god, it was, yeah. It was, it was 40k, 40k for a haircut, like what the hell. So I gave a little bit of a tip uh, yeah. because he really knew his, his thing. Like uh, he was also uh, razoring the edges yeah. and stuff like that. He like, put a really lot of effort. He has skills. Yeah, it's, it's really, really like a barber shop yeah. as you would expect in any Western country. So yeah. totally worth it. And so, such cool people, really yes, chill. Yes, indeed. So yeah, first day in Hue. And actually today we're basically eating and drinking <laughs> our way through the city. Oh yeah, we've already had such good bang mi and the, the salt coffee, which is popular here. Yeah. Amazing. It's called Cafe Moi. The signature egg coffee that you find in Hanoi. Here you'll find the salt yeah. version. It's kind of like uh, their signature coffee yeah. indeed. Uh, and a lot of places offer it. Mm. And I tr we tried it right away and it was amazing. It's amazing. And Moritz is already obsessed. We already <laughs> want to go search for another one. <laughs> We're going to be super hyped tonight on coffee. <laughs> but yeah, and the food so far also amazing. And we found a lot of cool places that we want to try out here. So Hue is gonna be eating, drinking, and historical landmarks. Yeah. So we're just gonna walk around now mm -hmm. and yeah, explore the city. Yeah.
Besides sipping delicious coffee, exploring the local cuisine is also one of the top things to do in Hue. We went to a place called Maison Trang to try Hue's famous imperial cuisine. With flavors crafted by skilled chefs during the New Yuan dynasty, Hue specialty foods are renowned for their distinctive taste, which stands out from the rest of Vietnam. In this restaurant, you can sample set menus with a bit of everything to see what you like the most. As you can see, our plate was filled with many different dishes, making it so much fun to try and mix. Nem Lui, for example, are these grilled pork skewers served with rice paper and then you mix it with fresh herbs, spices and dipping sauce. Bun Bo Khoi is a unique noodle soup with beef, sausage and pork. The taste is different than that of a pho, with a mix of spicy, salty and savory flavors. It's very delicious. Our favorite dish must have been Bam Beo, which are steamed rice cakes with various toppings such as dried shrimp, crispy pork skin, scallion oil, fried shallots and fish sauce. It's really an explosion of flavor and we really couldn't get enough of these little bites. As you can see, Hue cuisine is so extensive, making these tasting menus come in handy to experience the overall variety. And even our beloved Anthony Bourdain sang praises for the cuisine here. The next morning, we were on the way to the biggest and most popular attraction of Hue the Imperial Citadel. This walled enclosure, built in the early 1800s during the Nguyen dynasty, served as the imperial capital of Vietnam in centuries past. During the wars in the 20th century, especially the Vietnam-American War, over 90% of the historic buildings were destroyed or severely damaged. The buildings in the Hue Citadel have since gradually been restored and continual restoration is ongoing. This UNESCO World Heritage site is huge and even though large parts are empty, there are still plenty of things to see. It takes a long time to walk through the Imperial City and there are quite a few different sections to check out. We recommend buying the combination ticket if you're interested in also visiting the Emperor Tombs located outside Hue. The combo ticket offers access to Hui's Imperial Citadel, along with two or three Emperor Tombs, depending on the option you choose. The Imperial Citadel in Hui covers a massive area filled with impressive gates, walls, watchtowers and moats. Our visit starts at the Nyomong Gate, also known as the Meridian or South Gate. It's one of the most striking sights on the grounds and one of the four main gates leading into the city. The palace here was modeled after the Forbidden City in Beijing, so you'll notice the Chinese influence right away. The gate has two levels with an impressive pavilion on top. As you pass through, you'll find the Ta Hua Palace, which was the Emperor's throne room and used for important state ceremonies. The palace is adorned with intricate lacquer work and royal decorations. At the heart of the imperial city was the Forbidden Purple City, a private area only accessible to royalty and select servants. For over a century, this space was reserved for the Nguyen emperors, their families and a few others, with harsh penalties for trespassers. However, today, visitors can dress up as queens and kings and take photos on the throne for a small fee. Throughout the palace, you'll see many details showcasing Chinese influence, like dragons and mythical creatures from folklore and typical Chinese decorative art. As you wander through the green spaces and ruins, you can't help but wonder what it looked like before its destruction. You'll pass through many courtyards filled with greenery, styled plants, bonsai trees and ponds with interesting stone structures. These courtyards are surrounded by what used to be the residences of the emperor and the royal family. 
Our favorite part was the long corridor with beautiful covered alcoves glowing in these red and gold hues. As you explore, you'll find beautifully decorated gates leading to hidden courtyards and rooms, making it easy to get lost in the beauty of the place. These colorful gates with their mosaics and little dragon and mythical bird figurines were some of our favorites. Pay attention to the details, like the guardrails around the ponds that resemble bamboo. These were very cool to see. As we walked through the citadel, we started to notice the bullet holes scattered across the walls, a stark reminder of the Vietnam War. It's a sad contrast to the beauty of the place, reminding us of the horrors that took place here. Make sure not to miss the nine dynastic urns in the southwest corner of the citadel. These massive bronze urns are dedicated to different Nguyen emperors, each adorned with intricate carvings of landscapes, animals and symbols. The number nine is sacred in Eastern belief, adding to the significance of these urns. Since there are many open spaces and courtyards, it can get very hot during the day. Luckily, there are palace rooms where you can cool off, as well as shaded parks with pavilions and roofed corridors connecting different gardens and buildings. Again, you'll notice the Chinese influences in the garden architecture, from the plants to the rock formations in the ponds. We also pass by the Emperor's Reading Room, which is located in an inner courtyard when you cross the small bridge from the garden. It has some of the most beautiful details we have seen, especially the sculptures lining the roof. Don't forget to check out the Royal Theatre, a great spot to escape the sun. It's one of the oldest surviving theatres in Vietnam, once used for performances for the royal family. You can still enjoy traditional Vietnamese music and theatre here today if you would like. The theatre has a beautiful stage with displays of instruments, masks and costumes on the side. Let's fish the feet. It was red. Yep. <laughs> feet. What does it look like? Yum, 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 okay, yum. Okay, ready to eat. They don't come like uh, crazy maniacs, like usually. I'm gonna hold. Well, that was it. That was it for you guys. Ciao, ciao. As we headed towards the east side of the citadel, we passed a huge park with palm trees and also another wall filled with bullet holes. So we are right now in the Imperial Citadel in Hue and we just finished our little tour. Yeah. Uh, it took a few hours but it was super worth it actually. Definitely. I think we started around 9 and what are we now? Wait, let me check my phone. It's almost 2 so... Yeah, there you go. So 5 hours we spent <laughs> here actually. And we and literally saw everything. I, I, we took our time. Yeah, pretty much everything but... Yeah. Um, we're super interested actually in like cultural things and the architecture and all that. Oh, uh, the architecture is really beautiful. 
sometimes I just couldn't stop stare at a certain thing. It's really colorful, uh, like a lot of mustard, bluish, reddish tones, indeed. and mosaic. Ah, the mosaic, indeed. Yeah. It's also a little bit sad uh, being here because most of the of the site has been destroyed actually in the mm. Vietnam War. It was like bombed by by planes, and most of the buildings were damaged or completely destroyed. I think it was over 90 percent. Uh, so what we see most of the things are actually buildings that have been rebuilt like reconstructed yep. with the help of other countries uh, with the government and uh, initiatives and yeah it's actually so impressive to see that they were able to rebuild so many of those old buildings it's absolutely beautiful yeah so uh, quite a variety of uh, things to see so you also have these gardens uh, with little bridges pavilions, temples, and we do suggest to take the audio guide to know a little bit. Yeah, if you're interested oh, in, yeah. in what you're actually seeing, other than it's just a building, there you get like some background information, what it was used for and so on and so forth. Yeah. But there are like these uh, plates around as well with some yeah. info. And uh, So yeah. right now we just passed the wall which still has a lot of the bullet uh, holes from the Vietnam War, which haven't been removed because in the main walls inside the city, actually, we saw that most have been restored. I mean, I could see bullet holes which were like covered up, but here on the outer ones, you could, you still, you, you could see still see a lot. Mm. And it's like, it really gives you this feeling of something like drastic happened here. It's like such a important site actually for many reasons, not only because it was the Nguyen dynasty, which was the last dynasty of, of Vietnam, but also of the war and you can still see the signs of it uh, mm. on the walls which I think is actually super interesting and cool that they didn't cover it up at least here yeah, it's part of it. and still left it the way it, it, it was 50 years ago mm. yeah. so if you do pick up an audio guide at the entrance uh, you don't have to but uh, pick up one of those flyers where you have uh, the map, the map the, you can follow uh, certain routes which we advise if you don't want to miss yeah. anything. It's also a, a clever thing that they did, that they, yeah. was, they were offering three different routes it was. Depending so on how much time indeed. you have. And um, yeah, we spent quite some time in the beginning in the middle part because we thought it would be the most impressive part. But personally, uh, so if you have the map in front of you, the west side I thought was beautiful. So with the route, you will go first all the way till the north and then go come back down towards the entrance. Yeah. And it was so beautiful. That's my suggestion to spend the most time in the west yeah. part uh, of the whole. Mm complex because it's the most beautiful so far i've been repeating to moritz i can't believe there are people that skip way so yeah. far we're so smitten with Be because yesterday we, we didn't go like on our first day now yesterday we didn't go to the citadel first we we just enjoyed the city so we just were walking around we had salted uh, coffees which were amazing oh my god the, we're so addicted now. They're, they're, they're the best <laughs> uh we had some amazing food we tried out these platters mm. of of a collection of dishes you can try, like quite cuisine. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that was such an experience. We can really recommend that. Uh, we have two addresses for that, that I'll uh, mention yes. down below. So yeah, that's a must. Actually, Hue, from what I read and in our experience so far, is all about good food and amazing historical sites oh, and yeah, architecture. Truly. So we've been loving I mean, it so far. I mean, it was the capital at one point, uh, so it makes total sense actually to just stop by and just walk a little bit around uh, the atmosphere, let's say the historic value of, of where you are, the buildings, the architecture, yeah, yeah. the vibe. There are day trips if you are in Da Nang. I think from Hoi An it's already quite far, but yeah, we love it, we can recommend it. Don't skip it on your Vietnam itinerary, I would say. <laughs> so now we're gonna have another salt coffee, of course, because it's yep. afternoon. And after we might go to a pagoda and check that one out with our bikes, which we rented for the day. Yeah, so let's go, because <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> after spending more than half a day at the Imperial Citadel, we were starving. So we found the nearest restaurant for a quick lunch and to try another salted coffee. Once we refueled, we hopped back on our bike and headed to the Tiem Mu Pagoda, which isn't too far from the Citadel by bike. It's very pleasant to drive this stretch as there is a very broad and comfortable lane foreseen right next to the river.
The Tianmu Pagoda, also known as the Pagoda of the Celestial Lady, is one of Hui's most famous landmarks. Perched on a hill, it offers stunning views of the Perfume River. Originally built in 1601, this seven-story pagoda has a long history of destruction and reconstruction due to political unrest. Despite everything, it remains a sacred site and you'll often see monks wandering the grounds. As you can tell, the place can get very crowded with locals snapping pictures and a lot of activity all around. So if you're after a more peaceful experience, we'd recommend visiting early in the morning. As you explore the grounds behind the pagoda, you'll come across a car on display. This is the famous Austin car driven by the monk who tragically set himself on fire at the Ho Chi Minh intersection in protest for Buddhism. We wrapped up our day by the water, watching the sunset over the beautiful landscapes of Hoi. Thank you so much for watching today's video and we'll see you in the next one where we'll explore more of Hoi's outskirts by scooter. <laughs>